completed the interview portion of, of this video with uh, Casey and Sharon, and now we're going to learn all about his really nice Winnebago, and we're going to start up here right on the front with a Honda generator that he added. So Casey, tell us all about your generator. Okay, sure. We have an onboard generator, and uh, it's an Onan 4000. We call it our popcorn generator because we mainly use it because we're lazy because it turns on with a switch inside. But for anything that's longer term, we have a Honda on the front. We've got it locked down with a special locking plate, and when we run our air conditioning or anything like that, we'll just pick up the generator, we'll unlock it, pick it up, put it off to the side so it doesn't vibrate the coach, and we can run our air, uh, uh, our elect our air conditioner, excuse me, as long as we want on that generator. We have a five gallon fuel tank in the back. It sips fuel and it runs our generator just perfectly. We change, uh, it runs our air conditioner just perfectly. We changed out our air conditioner to run specifically on this generator. So most of them come with a 13,500 BTU. You, yeah, well, I assume even, yours did. It did, and it wouldn't even start with this generator. No. You need two Hondas for that. Right. This one is a Coleman Mach 1 with a hard start kit. I talked to the Coleman engineers in Wichita, and they said it should work, and it works beautifully. We can set the generator on the ground, turn it on echo mode, where it's very uh, quiet, and it will actually start and run our air conditioner all day long. Wow. So we don't look to be in those situations, Bob, but sometimes it just gets hot. It does, yes. And we don't have the ability to drive up into the mountains. So we like air conditioning. Uh, we're, we're not that tough. So right. so, uh, so if uh, one of our listeners wants to go buy that, uh, buy that Coleman, what exactly are they going to ask for? Coleman Mach 1 Power Saver. It's a little bit more expensive air conditioner, but it's called a Coleman Mach 1 Power Saver. We went ahead and put in a hard start capacitor kit just to make doubly sure that it wouldn't have a problem running. Um, I, I believe you can get that from just about any RV supply place. If they don't, they can order it. And by the way, I always thought an air conditioner would be difficult to install. It's not. It's very easy. So we, it's a little heavy. You just get the other one off the roof, put the new one in, bolt it up, and do a few connections. Okay, great. And so we, we, we uh, learned all about your RV before. Tell us again on this video uh, what your RV you're in. We're in a, a 2007. Uh, it's a 25-foot Winnebago Chalet. Um, the Chalet is a rental model. So it came from Arizona, and it was a rental. Uh, we bought it with about, I think, 62,000 miles on it. Okay. And you've been very happy with it. Actually, we love it. It's a it's a freedom machine for us. It just goes anywhere and does anything that we want. Okay, and uh, so and you made you have a, kind of an engineering mind. I kind of have an engineering mind. So every system throughout, you you can hardly look at something without me having touched it in some way, shape, or form. Um, just like a tire pressure monitoring system, because I'm uh, wanting to know my tire pressures. Just like a, this is a solar light right here off of uh, Amazon for $27. I barrel road to the side so that anybody who comes within about a 20 foot radius of us, that light turns on at night and is very bright, has its own solar panel and its own batteries and everything. But we know if somebody's coming by the coach. Um, and you literally Velcroed it. Oh, yeah, Velcro is crazy. And uh, how long has it been on? Two years. <laughs> well, that's that's a good test. Oh, the Velcro will stay on forever. Um, we uh, added a trunk onto the back for gasoline and all sorts of things like that. Uh, we also um, have big awnings and uh, shade cloth in the back that we hook up to the tabs right there. We have a big shade cloth in the trunk and we'll take it, it has carabiners on it, and we'll just clip it in so that the whole back end, if we need to get some shade back in the back, we can... Uh, face the sun and get shade. It's better if you can be in the shade. That's what we found. <laughs> well, you point the nose north uh, so that it's in automatically in the shade. Right. And the back end you cover with the shade cloth yep. and you're in pretty good shape. Right. And then we have our shade on this side. With the awning. And then we have, uh, and uh, we got this in Quartzite last year. We just found out how wonderful those little awnings are for the windows. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't even know they existed until last year, but we love them. Things like uh, we mount shovels on the back. Why do you need a shovel? Well, try and get into some of these drives in quartzite. And <laughs> yeah. Or you put out a campfire. So we just, we kind of add things as we need them. It, uh, function is very high for me.
So everything looks great back here. You got a lot of extra storage. You, and that's where your five gallon gas can is for the- It is, and the other thing is it's, it's where my barbecue is. I've got all sorts of other things in there and it's my table. I carry a table with me, but I'm lazy. So this is my table. I cook on here. I do all sorts of things. I think a trunk is, is a, a fantastic addition. Yeah, when you think it's your table as well. Yeah. So And who wants to carry a five gallon gas can inside? No, 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 yeah. And that five gallons, believe it or not, with the Honda generator, we can run that Honda about eight hours a day for an entire week wow. with for air conditioning if we need it. So, uh, other things that we've put on, I'm I, I need my internet. So right here, this is a Wi-Fi Ranger, and that allows us to get Wi-Fi from up to about a half mile away. So we extend that antenna up, and we can go into an area and we can do Wi-Fi surfing. I can be a block away from the McDonald's and still get the Wi-Fi. Uh, we have a cellular bo booster up top too. So we boost cellular. We have about 300 watts of uh, solar Renogy panels up on top. I'm lazy there again, so I don't mount them on a uh, tilt mount. They're on a flat mount uh, with about an inch and a half of, of uh, uh, out of level so the rain comes off of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that there's too much else on the outside. Well, sure, a beautiful rig. Well, uh, sometimes I'm, uh, I look pretty good, but when I'm in there with those, you know, quarter million dollar Monaco's, sometimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I look like the uh, poverty guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, would you it's like all relative, isn't it? <laughs> it is relative. Yes, please, let's take a look inside, because I know you've done some really cool things inside. So, Sharon, you have uh, two beds. Sharon sleeps up here, or you do? Uh, no, Sharon sleeps up there. Sharon sleeps up there. Sharon sleeps up there. And then, uh, just, you know, everything's nice. Everything is really nice. That's the key thing with, uh, with the Winnebago's. Well, it's... It's everything, I have so much stuff that everything, uh, it's very important to keep it organized. Um, there was a chair here when we bought this. Right, that's almost really standard to have a, a chair somewhere. And a chair to us is, is important, but we could get that by putting a, a swivel in the front seat. Right. So we did that instead. This is just a, uh, this is just a storage chest from Walmart. Right. I built a custom top onto it. Now we have all of our electronics. The shoe holder is something we always put in every rig. That way we can get our, uh, you know, our suntan lotion, our cables, our shoes, and everything just by opening up the door. Back behind, we believe hugely in uh, Reflectex. Uh -huh. Every window can be covered in Reflectex. We can easily go down into the low 20s and keep everything just fine in here with Reflectex and uh, doing that. And then we have our portable panels because, as you know, we can't always park in the sun. So, um, whoops, got some of my Reflectex from the front coming out of there. We put that in between so that they don't scratch. And so, um, we just use the Renogy uh, panels. We're, again, we're not, uh, we're lazy. So I just throw them on the ground. These are so that I can stake them so that they don't walk off in the no wind. Way, yeah. And uh, we just took them up with a long cable into our solar controller, sitting on the, uh, uh, sitting in the rig. So these you have 300 mounted on the roof, uh, Renogy panels, yep. and uh, two 100 watt uh -huh. for a total of 500 watts. Right, and we hardly ever use these unless we're in shade, because to be real honest with you, we don't use much electricity. I built everything uh, to conserve electricity uh, on a really energy. Uh, Heavy energy usage night, we'll use 30 amp hours and that's it. Oh wow. Our batteries are normally at 92% every morning. Uh, we just don't use that much. And they'll last forever that way. And the 300 watts is more than enough. So really we only use these if we get into situations cloudy. At Quartzsite a couple of weeks ago it was cloudy. Yes. We were charged by noon every day because we have 500 watts of solar even though we never saw the sun. So. Uh, these panels are very important to us when we need them. Most of the time they're not needed. Right. And we chose the flexibles simply because they are much lighter and uh, easier to deal with. If you're gonna move them in and out every day, you're gonna be glad you bought those. Yeah, they're three pounds versus 20. 
And most people don't take into account that, that the key, the main objective of solar is conservation. Be conservative. Oh, uh, yes. Now, see, I've built other rigs that utilized uh, big inverters and lots of batteries and all that kind of stuff. This rig, I did something totally different. We only have two batteries in here. So when I want to use the microwave, when I want to use the toaster oven, uh, when I want to use high draw of anything, we do fire up a generator. We average generator use of about five to 15 minutes a day. Uh, so some neighbors might not like us, but I'm hoping that five to 15 minutes isn't too bad for them. No, and with a Honda, they'd have to be really close for them to be bothered by a Honda. But we do monitor everything that comes in and out. I know what my solar panels are doing. I know exactly how much I've used and, and how much I've put back into the battery bank. And our um, controller is a little different, Bob. Since we're two weeks at a time without starting the engine, it's a duo. So it's not only charging my house batteries, but it's also charging my starting battery every day mm -hmm. so that it's ready to go because there's phantom loads on that as well. Probably kind of just like a trickle charger. Yeah, exactly. But it's part of the system. The inverter, we do have an inverter, but it's a very small inverter. It's a 300 watt, but it's a very efficient, fantastic 300 watt. It's a sure sign by Morningstar. Um, so the systems were built for efficiency. We do run the fridge on propane, that type of thing. You can't beat a fridge on propane. We can go six weeks in between propane fill-ups. Wow, that's a long time. And my wife, her engineering was the fridge. So in the fridge, number one, tubs are incredible for organizing things. We found tubs with holes to let air circulate at Home Depot. The Reflectex in the door. Oh, what a great idea that is. It holds the bottles so much better so they don't flop all over. Oh, well, that's so, I've, why have I never seen that before? And it does not, uh, it, it gives us better insulation in the door. Yes. Um, the fan, we never have problems with freezing because we run one of those little uh, uh, RV fans. So it's constantly running in there. Our fridge, we thought it was gonna be the worst part because we didn't think a propane fridge would be that good. It's been fantastic. It holds temperatures, six weeks between propane fill-ups. It's a wonderful fridge. Uh, People get these residential fridges and they have a huge consumption yeah, of electricity. No, it's not going to happen, yeah. And if you get into an area like we're in the whole rainforest last year, you don't see the sun. No. There's no sun. No, because of all the trees. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, you were talking quality earlier. I love the way Winnebago builds things. It's got full uh, extension slides everywhere. It's real wood. It really is solid construction. And this was for a rental. I mean, yeah. you know, where they might have cut corners. Yeah. Uh, if somebody out there is looking, I highly recommend a stove cover. This is a Camco off of uh, uh, Amazon for 30 bucks. It gives us extra space, but it also is a splatter shield. Oh yeah, it works fantastic. That's very nice. It's held on, not with screws, but with VHB tape. Oh yeah. So that was a two minute install. Right. Knife rack, magnetic knife rack, one of the smarter things we've done. We had problems with knives and sheaths and all that kind of good stuff. and. Now we don't have any problems. Uh, all the lights are switched out to either be LED or fluorescent. Um, the bathroom. That was a major change for you. It was the first thing we did. We do not like um, we do not like shower doors. They don't give you much room. So the first thing we did was take off the existing shower door, and we put a flexible arm here. So oh, we yeah. get a curtain out there, so we have plenty of elbow room. Um, we put in an oxygenic shower head to give us a lower flow. And then of course the toilet. Which is? Which is a Nature's Head composting toilet. So you are using the Nature's Head composting toilet. Love it. And here's the funny thing. That toilet perfectly complements our Wave 3. And here's how. Wave 3's always need a little ventilation. That toilet is constantly pulling in air. The fan works 24 seven. So it's constantly creating a negative uh, amount of uh, vacuum so the air is creeping in. So it gives us our uh, ventilation without ever having to open a window. Wow. So they just complement each other so well. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, the best thing in the world for anything I think is these command hooks. We have them all over the place. We do, uh, we, we have a lot of different gear because we, we, we kayak, we uh, backpack, we hike. So we have lots of different coats, lots of different hats, lots of different everything and uh, command hooks. 
just fantastic. Oh yeah. And if you ever want to uh, take a command hook off, all you do is grab the adhesive here, hold down, and it releases. Huh. Uh, you must do inflatables then. Yes, we use a uh, called a fast track. Uh, it's a high pressure kayak. Uh, I'm trying to think of the manufacturer. It starts with an E, but I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but yes, inflatable. Infl uh, just look up fast track inflatable kayak and yeah. I'll find it. Love it. The high pressure is very stable in the water and uh, um, enjoy that a lot. So um, I do a lot of photography. I do some astronomy. I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So this thing it doesn't look like it but it's packed to the gills right <laughs> and it still does not look in the least bit cluttered there's stuff everything everywhere just like here this is the technology cabinet with all the laptops and all the everything that you can possibly think of in there so big deep cabinet so it just stores everything and that's what we were missing in the class b we just ran out of storage too rapidly of course you have an awful lot of storage over the uh, bed oh yes and the one disadvantage is making the bed is a little more complicated because you can't get around it. It is but very complicated, which is why my wife does it. <laughs> Only why a woman's smart enough. <laughs> I can't do it. And the, the thing no, about, it is. I mean, it's hard. How do you make the bed? Because you've got to climb on the bed to make it. It is. Uh, there's a lot of people who would never have a corner bed like this, but this is all that comes in your shorter RVs. Another thing that the Winnebago puts in, which I like a lot, is the ducted air conditioning. So your air conditioning uh, intake is here and the exhausts go all the way up and even into the bathroom. Oh wow, that is nice. So it isn't just blowing right here in the center. Not one really cold spot. Um, one thing that we absolutely love and um, is, Bob, you use fans, right? Oh yeah, you got to have a fan. Okay, well, we have our fans and these are a special model of O2. You've heard of O2 I Cool? Do, yeah. Huh? Okay. Well, this is a special model of O2. We used to have the Endless Breeze, which moves a tremendous amount of air, but it takes a lot of power. Yeah. So we use these. They take maximum half amp of power. But the beauty of it is magnetic. magnetic. So we just plug it in. Right now, this would be our ceiling fan. We have these little washers mounted throughout the coach so that we can put our fans wherever we want to put them. If we want air blowing on our face, we can do that, our feet, wherever. So um, I would say if you wanted comfort, especially when it starts getting warm, these little fans have been some of the best things that we've ever done. Uh, that's the booster uh, for our uh, cellular. As you know, when you get out into the boonies, uh, you don't have good cellular. So we just put a paddle, uh, which is sets up here, and that paddle will go anywhere in here, and you place your device on the little paddle, and that way you can get internet. And what are you using for an antenna? Uh, they're just a tiny little antenna about this tall up top. Uh -huh. They make some different antennas, like uh, trucker's antennas and such, right. but they just stick up way too much for us. Right. Now, on the fiberglass roof, what I did up top was I went to Home Depot, I got a galvanized steel mending plate about this big, uh -huh. and then I just VHB'd it to the top because the antenna is magnetic, but it needs a ground plane. It has to have some steel. Right. So that fiberglass wouldn't cut it, but a little galvanized plate like that would do it perfect. Right. Five minute job. Uh, we have Blu-ray, Apple TV. Um, one of the things I love is my toaster oven. is actually a toaster It has a oven. toaster, i never it seen one. It is a toaster. <laughs> it works fantastic. But we, uh, we do not miss anything uh, as far as entertainment goes. The TV is 12 volt and has the DVD player uh, built in, but if we want Blu-rays, we've got those right here. We do uh, keep a weather station. Outside in the rear bumper is the temperature monitor. So right now outside it's 66, in here it's about 79. So uh, you know we can tell what gear we're gonna have to use when we go outside. In the cab, we did the swivel seat. Um, oh, there's all sorts of things. Our Garmin, our uh, uh, tire monitor, pressure, Buddha, got to have Buddha. And uh, then we run a, uh, instead of a scan gauge, we have an ultra gauge. And tell people, tell the folks at home what that is, either it's, one. It's like a scan gauge. However, it shows a whole bunch of uh, different parameters all at the same time. And in fact, uh, that's what I drive by is right there. Let me turn it on. You can see it. So um, with modern engines past 96, 
they come with something called OBD2, which is onboard diagnostics. It essentially, it's your computer. Yeah. And this ties into the computer. Is it hard to tie into the computer? It takes about five seconds. All you do is take the cover off and put the connector in, and you're done. Okay. And actually, it actually I use it for diagnosing. It'll do scan codes on your engine. You know, if it throws codes. Right. And uh, a lot of times people borrow it to check out the codes on their stuff. Right. But the reason I like it so much is look at all the different information you get at the same time. I've even got it programmed on the Chevys. It'll work for the temperature of the transmission, which is very important when I'm climbing mountain very passes. Important. So that's going to affect your money. How much money you spend on this rig in the long run more than any other thing? It's how hot that uh, transmission right. gets. Is that, you burn up that tranny, and you're going to really be sorry. But I don't really drive from the gauges on the dash. I drive from right there. There's my accurate speedometer, et cetera, et cetera. And the okay. reason I like it better than the scan gauge is just because it has all that information in one panel. Uh, folks, if you can't tell, he just started the engine. That's why we're seeing this. It's he's not moving. We're we're parked. It's zero miles per hour, 717, 706 RPM. Uh, the engine temperature and what's the one below it? Transmission. Temp Transmission temperature, 64. And then uh, average. Oh, that's your average miles per gallon over a long term, I would think. Mm -hmm. And. Oh, zero. You're getting zero miles per gallon right now, which is a very accurate reading since we're not even moving. Since we're not moving. But that's why I love the scan gauge. Yeah, except, and this one, what's it, what's it called again? Ultra gauge. Ultra gauge adds uh, adds transmission temperature. Yep. And it's actually a lot cheaper. That is only $80. That's only $80? Uh -huh. Oh, wow. I've is. used ultra gauges now for quite a while. But, um, no, uh, so we've we've set up the cab for driving because uh, obviously we drive a tremendous amount. That's one of the things uh, that we love about uh, the Class C is it's economical enough. Just like an oil change, an oil change on my diesel van was uh, eighty ninety dollars. Uh, oil change on this, I can take it in for a special and get twenty five dollar oil changes. Right. But we drive a lot. We saw a lot. Last year we did twelve thousand mile loop and we were up. Uh, in Washington and Oregon on the coast and just all over. Uh, it's economical. It allows us to go uh, many more places on a dollar. And while you may envy the 35-foot fifth <laughs> wheels and the 40-foot Class A's, when you go to drive through a town, a big town, you're really glad you're in this. Especially if you're in the mountains in Colorado. Yeah. Those tiny little towns, you cannot park, you cannot maneuver. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. And you it, can't climb the hills. Well, I even found when I had the diesel van that a lot of gas stations didn't have diesel. And, you know, it might be another 150 miles to someplace that had diesel. Wow. I, not that I have anything against diesel out there, people. They're fantastic engines. But for me right now, gas is working a little better. Right. And this will pull those Colorado mountains okay with a six? It will because it's a lightweight, uh, it's a lightweight vehicle. Uh, it's got the tow haul, so I'm in tow haul in the mountains. I'm revving. I'm keeping my engine at about 3,000 RPMs, and I'm slowing down. I'm not slowing down like the 18-wheelers are, but I cannot do 70 miles an hour up there. No, no, and you shouldn't. No. I'm looking at my transmission temperature a lot. And say that again, tr trans gauge. Ultra gauge. Ultra gauge. Ultra, Ultra gauge. Ultra gauge. Because I'm going to order one of those right away. It's a fantastic gauge. I love them. And they make one, especially for the Chevy, like you and I drive, right. that will do the transmission. Wow. Well, Casey, I'm just in love with your rig. I mean, this is, if you're a, a, a single person, this is ideal. If you're a couple, to my mind, this is ideal. And as a couple, you're you're okay in it. You're ah, not we love struggling it. too much. I know. Uh, I told my friends, I said, if we don't end up in a divorce, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> but actually, that has been the least of it. We love to cook together, we found out. I'll prep at the table. She'll cook. We have a little flip out here, so she cooks through here. As you can see, we have everything from microwave to an oven to a stovetop to a, a toaster oven. We prepare, and that's, I've gained weight since we left. <laughs> we prepare food together. We love being together. Um, you know, if we get in an argument, I have a really big living room she sends me out into. Uh-huh. So, no, it is perfect for us. Now, like I said, would I love the 35-foot Monaco? Oh, yeah. But I know the downside to the 35-foot Monaco. 
And uh, so for mileage, right now, uh, driving it around town, this is so. better for us now. Yeah. And we'd love nothing more to be out in those nooks and crannies where nobody else can get to. <laughs> And so one of the questions I would say ask then is uh, no toad? You, you no must have considered a toad. We consider it all the time. If we were to get one, we would get a four-wheel drive, probably a, uh, a Subaru or a Suzuki or something like that. Because what we really miss more than anything, especially out here in Arizona, is the four-wheel drive. We would love to get out there into the, the places that uh, are hard to get to. Right. So possibly a four-wheel drive, but you find it, you're not, the big thing is you don't have a daily driver. This is your daily driver, but that's not been a problem. No, and it keeps the cost down too. I mean, you have maintenance on another vehicle, you have insurance on another vehicle, taxes on another vehicle. It, uh, we found that our being is just so inexpensive that when we do add a toad, which will probably happen in the future, um, you know, it's going to increase our expenses quite a bit, I think. Right, in the, yeah, what you're going to save in fuel mileage May more may be more than made up for in repairs and insurance, mm -hmm. maintenance on a second complete vehicle. Yeah. So uh, for us right now, we're happy where we are. I don't think any RVer is a uh, forever. It's a shot, a snapshot in time of where they are right then and what they want right. at that time. So. And in a, in a two more years, the convenience of a daily driver may outweigh everything else. Yeah. And you'll get one. You can always evolve and grow. Mm -hmm. Well, Casey, thank you so much for sharing your home. It's just, it's wonderful. Oh, and uh, you did tell me you paid 22000 22000 and I had about $8,000 in improvements and maintenance because before we went out on the road, we had this thing gone over with a fine tooth comb by all the mechanics. And I told them, I said, replace everything that you don't think is good. And so uh, we hit the road in very good maintenance. Uh, so for a total, about 30000 total investment. And you know the toilet's a thousand dollars. Yes, yes, it is. That's that's an expensive. It is, it's an expensive piece of plastic. Yes, it is. It's amazing. A bucket's a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah, a bucket's a lot cheaper. <laughs> so, but even so, it's uh, it's worth it to you. Yeah, I think so. We like yeah. it. Okay, well, thanks so much, Casey. I appreciate your uh, sharing your life and your home with us, and uh, I'm just really impressed. And I think a lot of people have gotten some really good ideas that you can live in a. a 25 foot space really well yeah, yeah absolutely and thank you bob really appreciate it so everyone home thanks for watching and uh, uh watch us on our next video in the meantime subscribe to the channel like us on youtube and tell all your friends on social media there is another and a better way to live thanks casey thank you Bye.